right, welcome back. Let's jump right into it today. I put a poll out on Twitter uh, as far as whether or not I should do this video because I wasn't sure because this is a video that I, uh, this is a topic that I find very interesting because I engage a lot in social media and I talk about this issue all the time. Um, I've addressed it before, but I think it's always worth revisiting, especially considering we have so many new subscribers. By the way, thank you for being here. Don't forget to click the little bell button so you get notified every time I upload another fantastic video, and even when I upload not so fantastic videos. Anyway, so let's jump right in. Most of you said you wanted me to do this, um, and by the way, fo follow me on Twitter if you want to participate in that kind of poll and have some sway on the kind of content that we do. This is a, a, a thread by Shai Lin. Um, and this is how he titles it. He says it's a threat on labels, categorizing, and discourse amongst Christians in our current cultural moment. And I find this topic fascinating because uh, it is very common for uh, Gospel Coalition people and also people platformed by Gospel Coalition. It's very common for blue check mark, you know, Big Eva official channels of evangelical um, think pieces and stuff like that to try to set the terms of a debate. And to be honest, as a general rule, I don't think it's a very good idea to allow your opponent in a, in a conflict to set the terms of the battle. Like if somebody comes to you and say, okay, we're going to fight pistols at dawn, I, and you're not good at pistols, or you're not really sure where they're coming from, it's probably not best to just agree to whatever their terms are. And so that's a, that's a general rule, but there's actually some decent stuff in this thread, and so I figured I'd address it. As you might imagine, I have a slightly different angle, a slightly different perspective on all of this. Um, so you don't have to go by my judgment, um, but I, just in general, I don't think it's a good idea to let your op opponent in a, any kind of conflict set the terms of how the battle happens. I, I just don't think that's very wise, um, but let's just jump into it and go from there. Here's what Shai Lin says. This is the second tweet in the thread, because I already read the first one. He says, These days, the labels are flying around like crazy, often used pejoratively and almost always unhelpful. SJW, woke, Marxist, etc. Or, from another standpoint, we've got Karen, white evangelical, Trumpers, etc. Well, I appreciate, by the way, Shailen, the, uh, the recognition that labels aren't a one-sided thing. Of course, the, I've used labels before and people take offense to it. I, I understand that. Um, but oftentimes it's pretended like only one side uses these pejorative labels. So I appreciate the fairness that Shailen is putting here. Bo both sides absolutely use these kinds of pejoratives. Um, anyway, he continues. He says, I understand the desire to label and categorize people and their positions. It helps us to file them away in our mental folder. Once I stick a label, once I stick a label to you, I can easily say, quote, he or she is an ally, or I can say canceled and be done with them. I get it. First thing, there is nothing Christian about canceling anybody. Christians are commanded to bear with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Now, here's this is where I want to start kind of uh, talking about some slightly different perspectives here, because I think that labels are actually very helpful. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty often they're they're very helpful because a label is a shorthand way of saying something that has a lot more meaning behind it. Um, now, the problem with labels, in my opinion, is that if you mislabel someone, so if you if you label someone part of the woke church, right? That means a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of meaning behind that that, of course, you haven't defined because the reason you use a label in the first place is to, is to have a shorthand way of referring to someone. Um, but the thing is, though, that that label woke is actually very helpful as long as it's applied correctly because if you call someone woke that's really not woke, then there, then there's an issue there and, and, and there's a problem. I can definitely see that. But the thing is, though, that when – when you use a, a, a shorthand kind of uh, term or a label that's accurate, it's actually helpful so that we can move the conversation forward without having to describe a whole litany of things that you believe or don't believe. When somebody, when, when I say someone is woke and they have a woke perspective or they're a social justice advocate or an SJW, you pretty much know what I'm referring to. You know, they believe that these disparities are evidence of racism, that there's the oppressor class, the oppressed class, and you know, the oppressor class is essentially white people, and the press class is essentially black people. Like there are some basics that you know. Now there might be some differences 
in each person's opinion that's labeled social justice warrior, but you kind of have a general thrust over what they believe. And so in that way, labels can be very helpful. It's actually not helpful when they're when we're in the midst of a conflict, when we're in the midst of a debate for us to say, well, let's just all call each other Christians. Like, I understand that, but like, let, let's... Let, <laughs> Another another way to look at this is is let's say we were having a debate uh, between uh, Presbyterians and Baptists, right? And I said something. Well, ba- the Baptist position is X Y Z, and then my opponent said, "Well, well hold on, hold on a second, Se- hold on a second. W- w- why are you calling me a Baptist? I'm a Christian." And it's like, "Well, I'm calling you Baptist because you believe Baptist things. You know what I mean? I understand you're a Christian. I'm not saying you're not. What I am saying though is that." This, this set of beliefs in general is, is something that would fit you. Um, it wouldn't be helpful when we're trying to distinguish between two things like Presbyterian and Baptist to say, well, we're just Christian, so we're not going to use those labels. No, labels can be very helpful. Um, now, the other thing is, though, that there are labels that um, kind of imply the status of a non-Christian. And I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, and so if you want to quibble about each label in that regard, fine. But there are Marxists out there. You know what I mean? That's not just a label. That's actually a very descriptive word. There are woke church advocates out there. Eric Mason wrote an entire book about wokeness. You know, so so like, it's 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 kind of strange how this is 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 being a huge problem. Like there are Karens out there. I mean, I don't know. I think labels can be helpful as long as they're applied carefully. All right. So first thing he says, there's nothing Christian about canceling anybody. Christians are commanded to bear with one another to bear with one another and if one has a complaint against another forgiving one another as the Lord has forgiven you you must also forgive canceling people um, I, I think I know what he's saying I mean Okay, so then, but then as far as uh, canceling people, you know, where the whole, you know, social justice mob comes and you lose your job because, the, you know, you get the, the label racist or you're a confederate or whatever it is, uh, it's kind of like this vigilante sort of mob that, that c- can actually affect your life, can get you fired, can get, make it hard for you to get a job, stuff like that. Canceling, yeah, that's completely true. That's unchristian. We shouldn't be engaging in that behavior. Um, pro- seminary professors engage in this behavior. So many people engage in this behavior, it's ridiculous. So I'm totally with Shailen there. Obviously, you know, in the context of a local church, excommunication is a thing, but that's not the same thing as canceling. All right. Uh, he continues. He says, along with that, it's become popular to accuse people of virtue signaling. It seems to me that by definition, you can't lob that accusation at someone without judging the motives of a person's heart. But we're Christians, so we try not to do that, right? Um... And so, so here's the thing about virtue signaling, because I actually don't think all virtue signaling is wrong. Virtue signaling is actually a good thing in general, but what happens is, is when the virtue is fake, right? When it's, when it's based on a lie, when it's all talk, but no action, like that kind of virtue signaling isn't about judging the motives of a heart. It's simply looking at the words, looking at the actions and saying, well, this is a lie. This is what the Pharisees did in the in the streets. Like they were virtue signaling when they were talking about how great they were and, and praying so people could hear them and, and, and giving a, a, a poor person a, a couple bucks while you know blowing trumpets before them. Look at me, look at me, look at me. So, so the accusation of, of virtue signaling isn't necessarily judging the motives of someone's heart without any reason, without any action for it. So, so virtue signaling isn't bad if it's real virtue, but if it's, and it can be bad, but, it, but, but I, I don't complain about virtue signaling that's about real virtue. It's, it's when the fake stuff happens, when it's built on a lie and stuff like that. And that's very easy to identify and call out. So um, I don't think that this is exactly right, Shailen. People, when they talk about virtue signaling, they're talking about people who are lying or who are talking uh, a big talk but not doing much about it. Like, for example, when, when a white person says, we need more whites or blacks in positions of authority. We need to see more blacks in the pulpit. And it's like, okay. So if if you think that as a white man, you have an unfair advantage and you've taken from blacks and stuff like that, then give up your pulpit. And until you do, you're just virtue signaling. It's the same thing with reparations, right? So if you really wa- are walking around, you're a Christian, 
You're walking around thinking that the money that you have was actually stolen from blacks. If that's you and you think that right now, I saw Tom Buck say this. He said, then sell what you have and give it to the poor. You're required to do it if you believe that the stuff that you have was taken from blacks. I don't believe that, so I'm not going to be joining you there. But what certainly seems like to me is that you want to wait until everybody else is doing it and then you will do it. Like, if unless you're talking out of your, then do it. Otherwise, it's just a virtue signal. That's not judging the motives of someone's heart. That's just looking at their words, comparing it to their actions, and saying, you are a hypocrite, sir. You are a hypocrite. So I understand what he's trying to say here. Good virtue signaling, there's nothing wrong with it. Virtue signaling based on lies and virtue signaling when you're all talk and no action, that's obviously just look, trying to look good. We don't have to have secret knowledge into someone's heart. If they're saying one thing but doing the other, we, we know what they're doing. You know what I mean? You don't have to have uh, uh, eyeglasses that see into someone's heart. You can just look at their actions and look at their words and compare the two. You know what I mean? So we don't have to pretend like we, we need to have this secret knowledge. No, it's very easy to see when someone's virtue signaling versus when someone's actually being virtuous. And that's the problem. Like, nobody complains when someone's actually virtuous. Well... I shouldn't say nobody, but I wouldn't complain if someone's actually being virtuous, but it's the virtue signaling, the fake virtue, the virtue that doesn't cost you anything. That's the stuff that I have a problem with, and that's the stuff that I think a lot of us call out. He says, he continues, he says, but I chuckle when I hear virtue signaling said about me, because if it's, if doing or saying popular thing is what drove me, I would have started years before now. I'd probably have fewer gray hairs and few a few more fans and former friends still around if I did. Eh, I mean, okay, I believe you, but, you know, it's very possible to do the popular thing and wait a long time before you do it. So it's not really like, this doesn't really prove anything one way or the other, but I understand you're trying to defend yourself. No, no problem with that. He says, one of the reasons I've always been hesitant to engage a lot on social media is because of what I perceive is to be inherent limitations regarding nuance and context, which are, which are necessary ingredients for effective communication. I don't seem to have a problem with this. You know what I mean? Like, if you have a hard time expressing yourself on social media or whatever, then, you know, learn to do better. Like, I, can, I feel like I can be sufficiently nuanced on Twitter. You know what I mean? Now, liars and, and, and miscreants and evil people will always try to take you out of context, but they do that with books. They do that with the Bible. You could write thousands upon thousands of words and have a, a perfect medium for perfect nuance. The scripture is perfectly worded, right? We all agree with that. And still people misunderstand it. Still people take it out of context. Still people abuse the words. And so that's not Twitter's problem. That's not Parler's problem. That's not so, uh, F Facebook's problem. That's just people, man. I, I just don't see the problem. I, I always find it amazing. This is, this is something that just bothers me all the time. I don't really talk about it too much, but I find it amazing when people talk about the limitations of social media and how bad social media is. I'm not saying shy saying that, but a lot of people do this. I hate social media on social media. <laughs> so I don't think it's social media's problem. I mean, I, I feel like I express myself very well. And when I don't, if I have like a grammar problem that miss, that makes the tweet hard to understand, I'll delete it. I don't delete tweets when I'm getting canceled, by the way. I refuse to do that. But when I have a tweet that, you know, maybe it might be misunderstood because of my problem, I'll delete it and I'll reword it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I just I just feel like people a lot, a lot of times like to blame Twitter for uh its platform and its limitations for really things that are their own problem. If you're having a hard time expressing yourself, take responsibility for that and adjust what you say based on the medium. I don't, I don't think that that's really an issue at all. All right. He goes on, he says, but I understand that social media is primary a form of public discourse, is a primary form of public discourse in our culture. And so I try to steward it and use speech that won't leave me ashamed at the last day when I have to give an account. I don't always get it right, and I need God's grace for when I don't. Amen. Amen, Shailen. That's what I do every single day. I obviously am a little spicier than Shailen, um, but I think I'm doing the right thing. I think that I have biblical warrant for the things that I do, and I try to do it perfectly. Um, I know I don't, and so I'm not afraid of, 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 of making a mistake. 
I know God's got me covered. I know God's grace is sufficient for me when I make mistakes. I don't intend to make mistakes. I don't intend to sin. I don't intend to speak evil on people and stuff like that. Um, but if it happens, um, I'm not afraid to make a mistake. You know, I, I want God to to be glorified in everything that I do. And if something I do drags his name through the mud, then I, 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 I have to repent of that. I have to take it to the cross and leave it there. All right. <clears throat> He goes on, he says, much of what I said recently may seem new to some people, like I've caught up in some current wave or something, but I've literally said these things for years. It's on my first album. It's on the atonement, really sprinkled throughout my work, actually. Well, this is kind of weird because it's, <laughs> he just got done saying that he chuckles about when he hears about virtue signaling as if saying the popular thing is what drove me, he would have started years before now. But here he's saying he did start years before now. So there's some there's something there's something missing here. You know what I mean? This is either muddled thinking or there's something missing here. I'm not sure what which it, which it is because he seems to be saying if I was trying to chase the chase the popular thing I would have started years ago and then he's saying here, but this is not new. I started years ago. A little bit weird, Shylin. I'm not sure what you're trying to say here. I'm confused. I'm assuming that I'm misreading you or there's something missing. Um, but that's a kind of uh, that stu- stood out to me as kind of a weird contradiction in what he's saying. I'm not saying you are chasing the popular thing. You probably believe everything that you're saying. But if your example, if your if your evidence for why you're not doing the popular thing is that you would have started years ago, you kind of took that away two tweets later, which is kind of strange. All right, he says, but it was sprinkled intentionally so he's saying it wasn't a main thrust it was sprinkled throughout his work and he's saying that was intentional rather than saturated because i believe then and i still believe that the gospel must be primary amen shylin amen i think this is why a lot of people like you the person work of christ is the most important thing i can share with anybody but i'm not going to ignore important gospel implications and nobody's asking you to shylin nobody's asking you to so so I, amen, I'm grateful that you make the gospel the primary thing in a day when so many Christians are falling like dominoes and making something else the primary thing. That, that thread by Thabiti on Yabwili, I was going to do a, a video on that thread where he talks about black identity being what we need right now over and against Christian identity. Read the thread. It is unbelievable. It is a non-Christian thread. It is anti-gospel in almost every single way. Uh, I was going to do a video about it, but then James White did a video about it, and it was really good, and I don't think I can top it, (laughs) so I don't know. But uh, leave a comment below if you want me to do a video about that thread as well. But there are so many people like Thabiti and Yabwili that are making gospel a secondary thing or even a tertiary thing in some instances. So that's why I think Shailin, even though people disagree with you on race, they always start their comments to me, often do anyway, I love Shylin, man. I think he's great, but he's wrong about this and this and this. And it's like, yeah, and, and I like Shylin too. And I think this is why, because you have your head on straight when it comes to first things of first importance. And nobody would want you to deny gospel implications, but we might quibble with what you think a gospel implication is, because I don't think things like, you know, eliminating wealth disparities is a gospel thing. I don't think that. But um, anyway, let's move on and and continue. He says, I've tried to be faithful to the conviction of knowing nothing but Christ and him crucified for close to 20 years of public ministry. So if a single tweet or article can throw me into your SJW folder, you might want to examine why it's so easy for you to do that. Um, Well, I understand what you're saying. And um, I I don't think that I did that in my video. Maybe you disagree. That's fine. Uh, But... The thing is, though, that that a single tweet or a single article can do that. You know what I mean? Because because think about it like this, Shailen. Like like I'm not saying you're doing this, so please hear me. I'm not saying that this is you, but I want to give you an example that's impossible to refute. So let's say I have 20 years of public ministry behind me, and I I, I was promoted by all the people. I had the gospel-centered uh, uh, bona fides, and I had it all. For 20 years, I was saying all the same thing, nothing but Christ and Him crucified. And then I put out an article that said this, goodbye, Christianity. Goodbye, Christianity. Because uh, I've things in my life have changed and uh, now you know I have a homosexual ma- relationship and stuff like that um, yes of course a single tweet can do that this happens all the time people always come out as unbelievers in a single tweet 
Now let's shift it to Shailin, because again, I'm not saying you're doing that. What I am saying though, is if you go 20 years without writing an SJW article, and then you write an SJW article, then it's very easy to see why some people would say, okay, so he's an SJW now. Because Shailin, this is happening every day, multiple times a day. People are coming out as social justice advocates, and you might not like the term SJW, fine, social justice advocates, that weren't yesterday that are today and that happens in a single tweet. So it's it's I don't I don't think I have to examine why it's so easy for me to do that because so many people, Shailen, are not saying you're not a Christian, but now you're a social justice advocate in the Christian community. And time will tell how far down that rabbit trail you go because the end of social justice is paganism. The end of social justice is not a place that anyone should want to go who, who names the name of Christ. So some people go a little bit woke. Some people go all the way woke. And if you go all the way woke, I mean, that's walking away from the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? So, so people, a lot of people are waiting and seeing. It's like, okay, so he's a social justice advocate or SJW, if you will. Um, and I don't think there's any real reason why you have to examine yourself, why it's so easy. Well, it's, it's very obvious because you wrote an SJW article. If I wrote a Muslim article, of course people would easily put me, oh, AD's a Muslim now. Like, like why is that a problem? I, I don't understand that. I, I, I just don't, I, 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 frankly, let me, can I be honest with you, Shai? It seems like you really want to be a victim here. It's e like, it's very easy, it's apparent why someone would put you in the SJW folder after you wrote an SJW article for the Gospel Coalition. I, I don't understand why that's like, why, does, why are you trying to get me to feel bad for you about that? There's nothing inappropriate about that. Again, if I came out and I wrote a pro-LGBT rights article and then got on Twitter and complained, well, I've got 20 years of being a Christian and then I write this one article and you're going to put me in the LGBT rights camp. It's like, duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> anyway, Shai, let's continue. He says people are complex beings. Ain't that the truth? He says, that's how God made us. Most people are bigger than the mental folders we place them in. It's possible for two or 2,000 things to be true at the same time. Completely agree. I completely agree. As long as you make room for someone being involved in the alt-right, but also having something else true about them, you see what I'm saying? Like, not all alt-right people are the worst people in the world, and they're complex people. As long as you're going to make room for complexity and nuance across the spectrum, we're all good. We're all good because I completely agree with that. I know alt-right people that I think are believers. How do you like that? I think that 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 ideology about oh let me let me let me rephrase what I said. I know people who are called alt-righters <laughs> that are believers. But when you go all the way alt-right, just like when you go all the way woke, because there's a spectrum here. Some people dabble in alt-right stuff. Some people dabble in some of that stuff, and. So as long as we're going to make room for nuance and the 2,000 things folder, mental folders that, you know, for, for all people, all sides, I'm cool with what you just said because I know that there are all the way woke people and all the way alt-right people and, and then there's a spectrum in between. And we, we can't treat everybody the same because not everybody's the same. Anyway, uh, continues. He says, I can wholeheartedly agree with and appreciate things about John MacArthur or John Edwards, for example. And at the same time, wholeheartedly disagree with them about other things. And you can fill that blank with any number of Christian figures. Amen. I completely agree with you, Shailen. Um, he continues, Jesus does not fit neatly into our common, modern, polarizing categories. So why should we expect his followers to? If we're faithful to the Bible, there should be times when everyone's toes get stepped on, including our own. I would agree with that, although it certainly seems like he's going to attempt to push one of these third way politics kind of ways. And I'm not for that at all. I, I don't think that that's actually a biblical thing at all. But I agree with what he's saying about Jesus, so I'll just say that. So he says, so I, am I reformed? Yes. Cessationist? No. Republican? No. Does that make me a Democrat? No. Am I conservative? In some ways. Am I liberal? Liberal about what? Marriage? No. Theology? No. Justice for the poor and oppressed? Yes. Depending on what you mean. Um, yeah. Um, and, and, and the reality is here is that... That that's 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 something you should repent of, Shailen. That's something that you should repent of. That's a sin to be repented of. And I know your friends won't tell you that, but in, in this situation, I might be the only friend you've got if you listen to this, 
because to be liberal about justice for the poor and oppressed has a lot of meaning, and you know that. That means things like welfare. That means things like like socialized medicine and stuff like that. I'm not saying you believe in all of these things. I'm just saying that means certain things. When you use the word liberal and justice for the poor and oppressed in this way, people are going to understand you to mean liberal politically towards the poor and the oppressed. And what liberal politically towards the poor and the oppressed means is socialism. And socialism is a sin to be repented of. Do you understand me? Voting Democrat because of what they say about the justice. I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm saying if you do do this. Voting Democrat because of what they want to do with the poor and the oppressed is a sin to be repented of. And I will say that with no uncertain terms. And I'd love to talk to you about why I say that biblically. It's not because of my political beliefs. It's because I think the Bible is against the kind of welfare programs that the Democrats promote. And I think it's easy to see it in the Bible. It's easy to see. It's not one of these things that's hard to interpret. It's hard to accept maybe, but it's easy to see it. And so this kind of thing where you're trying to put, you are trying to promote this kind of third way thing where it's like, well, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, but I'm, I'm conservative about marriage. I'm conservative about theology, but liberal about justice for the, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, that's not how it works, unless you're using the word liberal in the classical sense, which clearly you're not, because then you just say conservative. That's what it means. Um, so so that, that doesn't work, Shy. You, you can't have that. You can't have your liberal politics for justice for poor and the oppressed. You can't have it. Anyway. Oh, and before I continue, obviously I'm for justice for the poor and the oppressed, just not the liberal version of it. That's a, that's a counterfeit justice. That's a counterfeit justice. Our law shouldn't favor the poor or the oppressed. We should treat everybody fairly. We can't be partial to the poor or the oppressed. We need to treat everybody with the same law. That's the point. Anyway, do I hate and grieve abortion? Yes. Do I hate and grieve police brutality and racial injustice? Yes. Do I see a police for peaceful protests of both things? Yes. Do I support rioting and looting? No. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for all that. A lot of people have questions about that. A lot of people have questions about that, and I think rightfully so, because of what because of our current cultural moment. And I'm sure you can understand that, Shai. You seem like a very reasonable guy. Our, our in our current cultural moment, if you say Black Lives Matter, people have to wonder. So, do you support the looting? Because that's what's happening. You know what I mean? All right. No, I do. I think. Proclaiming the gospel in word and deed is the church's mission. Yes. Do I think many reformed churches are severely lacking when it comes to disciples? Dis Discipling members on issues related to racism and injustice, yes. I could literally go on for hours, and if we sat down for a socially distanced cup of tea, there are many things I'm sure we'd be surprised to learn about each other. Shy, I would do it any time, man. We can do it virtually if you want to be adequately socially distanced. Because the thing is, I, I, in you, I see a reasonable person. I don't see the all the way woke SJW. I see a reasonable person. I'd love to talk to you about this. I hope you see a reasonable person in me. Because I, I think we would be surprised to learn a few things about each other. I think you'd be surprised to learn about my opinion on policing and law enforcement and, uh, and the prison system and stuff like that. I think the things I believe about that, you'd be surprised to know. And so I, I would love to chat with you. I think that it would do the body of Christ a great service for people like you and me to chat about these issues in a way that doesn't pull punches, that's direct, that's two men talking, and none of them trying to become the victim of the other. Because that's what the people of God is all about. You, you understand what I'm saying? But none of that would change that Christ is our treasure and the gospel is our only hope. Amen, Shailen. This is why so many people like you. This is why people don't put you in the category of Fabidi Anyabwili and Eric Mason and some of these more crazily woke people. Because you are committed to keeping the gospel first, just like I am. Just like I am. And that's commendable, Shai. I disagree with you on, on a lot of the things you said in that article. That's commendable. He says, the benefit of the doubt is something we always want from others, but have a hard time extending. That is so true, Shai. I completely see that in myself, and uh, I work every day to try to root that out of my system. That's because it's a gift that we're more prone to give to those we love. That's because it's a gift that we're more prone to give to those we love. So if you love me, I'd really appreciate that gift, and I'll try to give it back. Thanks. Thanks, Shai. Um, this is a good thread. There's some good stuff here. I obviously quibbled with some of it, and I obviously have a different perspective than yours. Um, 
But Shai, I'd love to talk to you anytime. I'd love to talk to you anytime about this. Um, you know what? I'm going to try to reach out to you privately. Um, I haven't done that yet, and I'm going to try. Um, and so hopefully you'll take me up. And it doesn't have to be recorded. Uh, if it is recorded, I think that would be fantastic uh, for the body of Christ to see two men who respect each other, who don't think the other one's an unbeliever, who disagree sharply on this particular issue, talking about this particular issue in a way that at the outset we say, don't cancel the other guy. Don't, the mob, don't, 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 don't come after this guy with your pitchforks. I think that would be a great benefit to the body of Christ. I hope you take me up on it. And if you like this video and you want to see that happen as well, please uh, signal boost this. Don't harass Shylin. But signal boost this. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. God bless. By the way, in the first part of this video, um, you might have noticed that there was some weird noise in the background. It, I, I had to stop the recording, and I didn't want to lose my train of thought, but what I saw it was amazing. My neighbors have chickens as well as I do. I went outside and I heard this sound, uh, essentially like a bird squawking in fear. And I saw two what appeared to be foxes or coyotes circling their pen, which means that I need to step up security for my chickens as well. That is terrifying.